Hello, my name is Robert Hensley, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about <clears throat> atmospheric carbon pollution. So I understand that most people know what carbon emissions are and the climate disaster they cause, but a lot of people don't know that there are actually a good number of devices designed to cut back on carbon emissions. Okay, so before we begin, I wanted to give a brief overview of what carbon is and how it enters the atmosphere. So carbon is released from burning of a compound containing organic matter, also called fossil fuels. So, <clears throat> you know, the examples of these are wood, coal, natural gas. They're all fossil fuels as they originated from a carbon containing living organism. So the carbon released from burning fossil fuels combined with oxygen in the atmosphere, which creates carbon dioxide gas, which can easily work its way into the atmosphere. So the biggest reason carbon dioxide gas is dangerous to the atmosphere is because it contributes to the greenhouse effect, which basically is where carbon dioxide gas creates a cover that traps all of the sun's energy in the atmosphere. So it bounces back down to earth and is absorbed by the ocean and the land where it warms our planet and contributes to global warming. There have been quite a few tools developed to limit the amount of carbon that makes it into the atmosphere and I'm going to talk about a few of those now. So the first is carbon scrubbers. So um, carbon scrubbers are a tool invented to help remove carbon emissions from making it to the atmosphere by capturing the carbon from the air and they store it in underground reservoirs. So the biggest problem with carbon scrubbers is that they are extremely, extremely expensive. Even though they're super effective, they oftentimes cost factories more than what they're profiting which results in factories using the stored carbon to sell to fracking companies for a profit. And because they do this, it completely undoes any of the good effects of the carbon scrubbers because now that carbon is going to make its way into the atmosphere either way. Another tool that's being developed to counter carbon emissions in the atmosphere are electric cars because, as you know, they don't use fossil fuels and obviously they're better for the environment, but the main problem with electric cars is that they are expensive to produce, so that's going to keep the prices up for a long time instead of making them cheaper where everyone can afford them and everyone can use them for greater effect. But that's, that's, that would be a loss for the company, so you know they're not going to do that because they want to make money off of you. So having an electric vehicle as the standard car um, it's very, very difficult, and uh, personally, I can't see that happening anytime soon. Um, so why are more solutions not being implemented? Well, as I was mentioning, solutions are expensive, and as you know, companies love to make money off of you. There are plenty of ways to reduce the amount of carbon emissions that make it into the atmosphere, but they lose companies' profit, or they're expensive to implement in the first place, so because of this, you know, they rely on fossil fuels because uh, they're cheap. And when they sell them to you, they make the government lots of money. You know, gas prices, things like that. You, you make them a lot of money and they'll use these, that money to continue making factories that use the fossil fuels. So that just builds over time. And as I mentioned before, <clears throat> regulating new standards is difficult. It will take a lot of time. The likelihood of that happening is very, very low because it's expensive for everyone and <clears throat> there's no profit involved. That's the biggest thing I want you to get from this is profit is more important than the health of our environment when it comes to these big corporations because <clears throat> they don't care what the world's going to look like in 100, 200 years because they're making loads of money right now and that, that's all they care about. So, is it too late to help? There's nearly 1.4 billion citizens globally who rely on fossil fuels to meet basic living standards. That means that they will not be able to survive without the use of fossil fuels. They're 100% reliant on fossil fuels. So, you know, <clears throat> because of that, um, finding ways to reduce the use of fossil fuels uh, is extremely, extremely difficult because we are so reliant on them nowadays with agriculture, transport. So at this point, it's, it's 
definitely, in my opinion, too late to stop the climate crisis, but I believe there are ways to slow it down and give us a little more time here. You know, <clears throat> investing in clean energy, like solar panels, um, reusing water, um, uh, even, even purchasing an electric car if you can afford it, uh, all in the long run will help slow down the climate crisis. Um, <clears throat> as I said, reusing and recycling things such as plastics, glass, you know, instead of making its way into a landfill where it will sit, it can be repurposed and reused. Uh, yeah, it'll make corporations uh, profits uh, reselling used material to you, but at least they're not using new materials to create more waste, which they sell back to you. Okay, so I wanted to recap a little bit um, about what I talked about. So the biggest point, at least in my opinion, when researching about climate change and that kind of stuff is that um, when it comes to corporations, profit will always be more important than the environment. Um, <clears throat> it makes no sense because you would think they would want to have a usable environment with customers to sell things to, but when they can make money now, why waste it? Why waste the opportunity? Um, <clears throat> next, you know, I believe it's too late to stop the climate crisis. Um, I think it's possible to slow it down using cleaner energy, but um, you know that's expensive. It requires a lot of planning. Um, you know, solar panels, electric cars—they're they're very expensive to start out with, but you do end up saving money in the long run. It's better for the atmosphere, so that's something to think about. Um, lastly, something I didn't mention yet is voting. Voting is the absolute most important thing you can do to help your climate. Um, <clears throat> voting for politicians who take this stuff seriously is the only way we're ever going to have a chance of having some kind of change um, <clears throat> to slow down the effects of climate crisis. And, you know, just making better personal life choices is something else you can do. You know, um, carpooling, taking shorter showers, stuff like that. Just small things can make a huge difference if everyone uh, did them. All right, so that was all for me. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for keeping up with me. I apologize if I was a little nervous. Uh, um, I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving break. Uh, thank you.